Hi, how's it going? This is Resident of Conlowood for YouTube. Resident under slash of under slash Conlowood for bit shoot. And I'm here to do my final Dark Shadows video for tonight. It's entitled The Unfinished Arcs of Victoria Winters and Barnabas Collins. You know, Dark Shadows is my favorite series of all time. The 1966 series is amazing. I love it up and down. Is it without its faults? Hell no. Dark Shadows has plenty of them. <laughs> and primarily, the two, to me, it's the unfinishing of their arcs that they created, really. Keep in mind, when Dark Shadows started off in 1966, there was no vampire in sight. There was no Barnabas Collins in sight. I know some people love the play revisionists and say, Oh, the show always had Barnabas. No, no, no it didn't. Um, <laughs> the show starts off with Alexander Isles, aka Alexander Mulkey at the time, playing a girl from New York City. But this girl uh, is from a foundling home. Not only did she work there, she lived there, meaning she's an orphan. And she receives this letter from this woman, Elizabeth Colin Stoddard, from Colin Port Maine, from Collinwood, the estate, to be a companion and governess to David Collins, who is her nephew. Now, has <clears throat> Victoria Winters ever heard of Elizabeth Collins Sutter? Hell no. Has the Hammond family known? Nope. At least that's what they tell Vicky, and they're telling her the truth. They've never heard of the Collins family or anyone at Collinwood and that's the way Elizabeth loves to keep her little secrets too and listen Dark Shadows is characters who are full of secrets that's what the theme of the show really is too it's not just the supernatural it's it's secrets so this girl hops on a train she accepts a job offer and once she gets on a train she's on her merry way and she can't help but think Man, I'm really doing it. I'm going to try to come here and find out about my past. And you might say, well, wait, why, did, why is Collinwood so important to her specifically? Well, Collins Port, Maine, you ask. Well, it's simple, folks. 50 miles away is Bangor, Maine, the capital. Well, sorry, Bangor, Maine. Augusta is the capital. Keep in mind... Bangor is where the postmarks were that were coming to Vicky. The there was Vicky was receiving fifty dollars, I believe, a month until I think she was sixteen, and they just stopped. And they were postmarked Bangor, Maine. Well, on a map, fictionally, of course, Bangor is fifty miles from Collinsport, and. Is that a thin connection? Yeah, it's fucking paper fucking thin. But, hey, she she goes for it. She figures, you know what? Maybe there's a connection here because I've got nothing else to go on other than this and the note that was attached to the box I was goddamn left in. Her name is Victoria. I can now take care of her. And by the way, the reason she's called Winters is because she was left in the middle of winter in, in that box outside the orphanage. Wow, somebody didn't want to raise their kid, right? <laughs> so, Victoria, Win Victoria Winters' arc begins on a very curious note. And when she goes here, she's told by everybody, Burke Devlin, Maggie Evans, to, to turn her ass around and go home. And it's because they're ignorant to who she is. They're ignorant the fact that this woman, literally, she has no home to go to, home to in a sense. She has no family to home to go home to in a sense. She literally is coming from somewhere where she was raised in an orphanage, worked in that same orphanage, and she's leaving there to come find, not, not just take a job, but to find out about who she is. And you might say, 
Well, what stops Vicky from finding out about herself? The writers, in many ways. The writers do dumb Victoria down a little bit, which I didn't love, but I didn't exactly hate it either, because they don't completely dumb her down. See the Phoenix arc, which I'm about to bring up. And uh, I mentioned in my previous video, John Philip Bentoncourt made Victoria Winters a heel, and I loved it. I, you know, I do wish Dan Curtis would have let Alexandra Isles come back and be the heel she wanted to be. Because she could have did it. And if you really want that proof, look, John deserves full credit for making that character the heel he made her in his story. No question. But if, if you want to catch a tiny, tiny hint of it, go watch the Phoenix arc. And now she's not an antagonist in that arc. But she says something to Laura that is antagonistic. Died a hundred years, died by fire. And the way Alexander says it, it's almost like she's teasing her, like, like, bitch, I know, <laughs> right? It's so well done. And again, that's just how great of an actress Alexander is. She, she could pull off being an antagonist. And I really do think if Dan Curtis would have allowed that to happen, we would have had Victoria Winters coming back. What did Dan Curtis ultimately do with Victoria Winters? Well, <laughs> after Alexander Isles left, they recasted her. Alexander Isles leaves the show because she's pregnant. And, well, her character's supposed to be a virgin and she can't very well be pregnant now, can she? So they recast her. And the woman they recast with, it's not that she's a bad actress, but she's no Alexander Isles. This is a woman who you've started this journey with. And I think that's the biggest issue everybody has with her. Is that, look, we started with Alexander. If you're going to do anything, I don't blame them for recasting her because they did need to recast her for those parts because they were filming sequences with her about going. She, this is after she comes back from 1795, way, way after they make the change, and then they send her back in a strange way yet again. Again, Victor, when I say Victoria Winters was, was sort of going through time almost at will, it's because she basically was... I dare, I dare say, take away the machine, and, and Victoria Winters is the original Sam Beckett in a, in a weird way. It's like the original Quantum Leap in a weird way. I'm not saying Quantum Leap ripped off from Victoria Winters or Dark Shadows, but there was some definite inspiration, if you catch it. Um, <laughs> come on now. You didn't think I was going to get that in there? Uh she goes back through time yet again. This time it's not Alexander Isles. It's the other actress. And Barnabas wills himself back in time. This is after, obviously, Barnabas is well out of his coffin. And he ends up saving Victoria. And her and Peter Bradford go off and get married. And Victoria Winters is forever back in the past. But during the Leviathan arc, um, we're, we're told Jeb Hawks pushes her. Jeb Hawks pushes her off Widow's Hill after somehow pulling her back through time. What is the oldest rule in horror, my friends? If you do not see a body, therefore there is no dead body. And my friends. They never show a dead body of Victoria Winters. Why? Because she never hit the fucking ground. And until they show said dead body, well, then she never hit the ground. 
to me, what happened to Vicky Winters, again, see what I just said. Victoria Winters was going through time. She kept, I think Vicky fell through a time warp and she continues to fall through time that is continuing to fall, 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 fall. And one day she's just going to fall and it's going to be into not the rocks, but the water. And it's not going to kill her, but it's going to wash her ashore and she's not going to know who the hell she is. I think honestly that's what's going that is what happened to Victoria Winters. Now let's let's address the controversy, shall we? I love Dan Curtis. I respect the hell out of Dan Curtis. Look, without Dan Curtis, there would be no dark shadows. It's that simple. But let me say this, with all due respect. Dan Curtis was out of his fucking mind for not making Victoria Winters a heel. Completely out of his mind. Because if you could not, if you could see, <clears throat> you know, going back in 1795, if you could see doing an 1897 storyline, then why the hell can't you see your original antagonist being a protagonist? The writing was well on the wall. Hell, the Leviathans had so much power. Why couldn't they have brainwashed Victoria winners? They damn well could have. Um, hell, they were claiming they had control over Josette's ghost. And finally, Barnabas called that bluff. And eventually, we all knew. Everybody and their mother's brother knew Barnabas was going to call that bluff. Um, and finally, you know, I'm going to get to the Barnabas Collins arc. The Barnabas Collins arc doesn't start until episode 211 when Willie Loomis opens that coffin. Now, the starts, really, that's when Bart will be first see him. The, the, the real start of it is like 206 and forward, where Willie Loomis sees Barnabas' portrait. And, you know, that's sort of... But we don't see Barnabas the vampire until he gets out of this coffin in 211. Keep in mind that they they were going to kill off Jonathan for its character, which I find amazing. You know this this arc <laughs> could have been one of the could have been as short lived as the Phoenix arc, really, but Jonathan Fred had started receiving fan mail. And that fan mail is what really catapulted his character to stay. I mean, think about it. If he doesn't receive fan mail, Dan Curtis is going to kill him off. And we're not going to hear the name Barnabas Collins. And after receiving that fan mail, they realize, you know what? We can't kill him off. He's too popular. And they do the 1795 arc. Is Barnabas Collins... And Victoria Winters, the longest two arcs in Dark, Sh Dark Shadows history? Quite simply, yes, because they never technically end in my point of view. From my point of view, I've explained how Victoria Winters never really ends. She never dies. And Barnabas Collins, you know, most people are going to point to the fact, hey, you know, he's no longer a vampire. That part is true. Do I believe Dr. Julie Hoffman fully got rid of all the evidence against Barnabas? She may have gotten rid of the evidence of, to the point saying he's a vampire, but I dare say Julia Hoffman probably kept some of Barnabas' blood samples. You know, a lot of people like to call Julia Ho Dr. Julia Hoffman Dr. Sedative. What you really should be calling her is the most smartest doctor in the history of fictional television because if it weren't for this woman's pure bold intelligence and cunningness she would have never found out Barnabas was a vampire to begin with in her pure curiosity 
keep in mind, it's this woman's curiosity about the Evans case. It's this woman's curiosity about why Maggie Evans is acting the way she is acting. And then she becomes curious about Barnabas himself, which probably causes her to sneak into the goddamn old house and find his coffin and know how holy shit he's a vampire. <sighs> I love Dr. Hoffman. Thank you, Grayson Hall. Thank you. But the Barnabas Collins arc, is he an antagonist? He's a bit of, he's, to me, he's a bit of both at times, but I don't ever, I've never personally viewed Barnabas as a full-blown antagonist, because if he were ever a full-blown antagonist, he would have killed a hell of a lot more people. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So I've I've never personally viewed Barnabas as an antagonist. Now, let's look at everything Barnabas does. When Barnabas gets out of his coffin, he introduces himself to the family, obviously after changing into modern-day clothes, finding modern-day clothes. He then wants to buy the old house and fix it up and that's exactly what he does then he kidnaps maggie evans who is the spitting image of the lovely josette collins aka josette dupre collins we come to find out that post kidnapping maggie barnabas has well during the maggie evans kidnapping i should say Barnabas has a sister, and her name is Sarah Collins. Now, we all knew there was a Sarah. We just didn't know who she was. Well, she's Barnabas' little sister, and she's come back not just to help Maggie, but to haunt the hell out of everybody who helps Barnabas and to confront Barnabas himself, and she does exactly that after Maggie is freed from Barnabas and at Wincliffe with Dr. Hoffman. And obviously Dr. Hoffman betrays Maggie in every way, shape, and form. Now, she doesn't betray her to the fact of letting Barnabas kill her. <sighs> Julia Hoffman, for a woman, has the biggest set of balls out of any of the Dark Shadows characters. <laughs> like, seriously, I mean, she literally gambles with not just her life, but her patient's life as well. I dare say Dr. Hoffman was the inspiration for Carl Kolchak. If I could have asked Dan Curtis one question, that would be it. Hey, was, was Hoffman the inspiration for Kolchak? Because she had to be. Um, in my opinion, at least. But, when Dr. Hoffman comes to Colin uh, Wood, I think I jumped. Let me think. Let's see, Maggie gets free, Wincliffe. Now, when Dr. Hoffman comes to uh, Colin, Collinwood, she does not say she's Dr. Julie Hoffman. She says she's writing a history of the rich families in New England. And, well, why not, st why not do the Collins? <laughs> and so that's, that's what she poses as. So they don't know she's a doctor right away. So this is a part of the Barnabas Collins arc as well. Again, there's a lot of things in the Barnabas Collins arc, so I'm going to be here a while. And what happens is, you know, slowly but surely, Dr. Hoffman does find out Barnabas is a vampire. She takes the family history book, the family Bible, and is showing, you know, the family history book, and is showing him. And as he's looking at it, she takes out her little compact mirror, with a mirror and well she doesn't see his reflection and she puts two and two together and then she finds his coffin and realizes holy shit he's a vampire it's it's for real but she doesn't run instead when he visits her in her room she makes him one hell of an offer i can cure you and he listens and she starts not just doing experiments with blood transfusions pretty much that's what and that's something what i mean i think that's something dr hoffman would have held on to barnabas's vampire blood dna 
for the simple reason of, you know, when they do say, I, I, I'm not trying to jump. What begins to happen is, you know what, I, I won't jump because of there, this is important to me. What begins to happen is, Barnabas does not trust Julia, you know, and it's simple for the fact Barnabas doesn't fucking trust anybody. It's not it's not a Julia Hoffman thing. It's just he doesn't trust anybody. It's how he's managed to keep his secret so goddamn long. He just he before Stone Cold Steve Austin had the model of DTA, Barnabas Collins damn well had it first. Um, he just didn't know the, the phrase. <laughs> don't trust anyone. Well, that was Barnabas. Don't trust anyone. That's how you keep your secret. So, Barnabas and Julie have a lot of confliction with each other. Barnabas wants to kill anybody who even suspects. Dr. Hoffman doesn't want him to do that because it'll blow her whole operation out of whack. But, when Dave Woodard comes close to finding out... Barnabas does kill him, and that's what sort of causes a big rift between Julia and Barnabas. That, and Barnabas rushing the experiments, and it sort of backfires because he rushed the experiment and caused him to age. Well, then, him biting Carolyn causes him to age back to his normal age, to his young self, his young vampire. There was an old man Barnabas in the series as well. <laughs> Mark will like that one. <laughs> there were two old man Barnabases. You like that? Uh, shit. <laughs> oh, God. Um, can you tell I'm having fun here tonight? <laughs> so... What begins to happen is David Collins, you know, had been accusing Barnabas, you know, and that's sort of what pushes Dave Woodard as well to investigate Julia and them. And when they killed Dave Woodard for coming way, way too close to, for basically finding out the truth about Barnabas, Barnabas is insistent that David Collins be moved away. They're ready to do it, but again, Dr. Hoffman has stopped helping Barnabas, and she goes, you know what, why don't we find out if the boy's telling the truth? Maybe he does see a Sarah. Sarah is the, re is the storied reason why they're going back to 1795. Well, at least from a partial standpoint. That's why they're conducting the seance, at least. The real reason they're going back to 1795 from a behind-the-scenes standpoint, I've said, and it's because Jonathan Fred started receiving tons of fan mail, and instead of killing him, they decide to keep him around for the long term. Uh, smart call. He becomes too popular to kill off. Now, their advertisement for this is you're going to find out the secret of the chain coffin and you, they show Victoria winners. Now, you would come to think that that means Victoria winners is going to find out about the secret of the chain coffin. She never actually does. They're more using Vicky to get you to 1795 more than to tell the story through her. They're more telling you 1795 through the people who lived 1795, being Barnabas Collins, her, his uh, father Joshua, his mother Naomi, uh, Jeremiah, his uncle, Josette Dupre Collins, Angelique, who were introduced to. So you're more hearing the story through the, those characters than you are necessarily Victoria. Yeah, Victoria's there, and they taught... they. She is a part of the story in some frame, but she's not necessarily the major focus of said story in 1795. Yes, she does have a witchcraft trial, and she damn near gets Han. Well, actually, she does technically get Han, but not dead. Um, she gets back to, obviously, her own time. And that's where we come back, that after, you know, you see Barnabas chained up, um, you see, you know, you see how he became a vampire, 
And look, the Barnabas Collins arc, again, he goes back into the 1800s. And where this really concludes post everything is when they go back to, you know, 1840 and to start who they believe is Gerard Stiles. But really, they're not stopping Gerard Stiles. They're stopping an occult leader who inhabits uh, uh, Gerard's body. And they stop him. But in the process of stopping him, Angelique has lifted the vampire curse because she does love Barnabas. She's always loved Barnabas. Um, she gets shot for her trouble and dies. Um, Dr. Hoffman, Barnabas, and Professor Stokes go back to their own time. And it's 1970, I believe, or by the time they get back. And... The series concludes when Barnabas is no longer a vampire and they go off to, what, the observatory, I believe? Um, Elizabeth, Barnabas, Professor Stokes, and Dr. Hoffman go off to the observatory. Now, you might say, well, that's it. The Barnabas Collins arc is over. No, it's not over. Because to me, Julia Hoffman would have kept Barnabas's vampire blood DNA because there's there's a part of the Barnabas Collins arc is the Dr. Lane story and Dr. Lane brings Adam to life. Keep in mind during that arc Julia and Dr. Lane don't believe there's a witch. Now Julia eventually knows better and yeah she does believe it she comes to find out okay this shit is real um, but I think what Julia Hoffman would have been most curious to find out inside Barnabas's DNA is just exactly how was the curse really affecting Barnabas's blood molecular level? Because she saw the destructive cells, but okay, was was this really an effect on the blood or the mind? And that's something Hoffman would have kept his DNA vampire blood DNA for eventual study. So I think Dr. Hoffman did keep vampire DNA, which leads me to believe one thing, Barnabas was going to become a vampire all over again, and that's probably how you could sequel the hell out of this series. <clears throat> again, the Barnabas Collins arc never really ends. It doesn't. I mean, it's it's sort of a a happy goodbye, if you will, or so long for now from the series. And the Victoria Winners arc, well, it, it never really ends either. So you have two arcs, to me, that are still as wide open as they always were. They're still there to be explored. And I can't stress that enough. Look, Barnabas could become a vampire again. Dr. Hoffman would have kept the DNA. Um, who has it? I don't know. Probably inside of a, a bank or safety deposit box or hell. Maybe, maybe one of her descendants has it. Oh, what's this? <laughs> you know, but, um, again, to me, the Barnabas Collins arc and Victoria Winters arc, they're unfinished. They're, they're not. They're not done. Again, they're the longest arcs of the series because they never really conclude. They just they don't. To me, that's not a conclusion of of the arc. It's just okay. There there's still other things that. Okay, Barnabas never cured. Uh, look, Quentin's still a werewolf. He just can't change because of his painting. Uh, Chris Jennings is still out there. He's still a werewolf, and he doesn't have any painting. Uh, look, there's a lot of stuff. Dark Shadows could be brought back, and that is my absolute hope that Dark Shadows is brought back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Huge shout-out to some friends of mine. Huge shout-out to Mark. Huge shout-out to John Philip Bentoncourt. 
huge shout out to those guys. Um, <clears throat> just a shout out to you guys. I, I just honestly think that if they plan this right, one day we're going to get a Dark Shadows continuation off the original series on television. But for now, if you want the reading continuation <laughs> at Return of Sh Shadows, uh, blog story. Definitely. Definitely. Beautiful, beautiful job. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.